I was tipping the Dragons, but unfortunately, there's been a few error, a few injuries. So they've lost Kezi Apps through injury, they've lost Jamie Chapman, and Tarlay Holmes was also unable to overcome her wrist injury. So I hate to do it, but I think You're I'm going to jump in ship. I'm going with the Eels. You're going with the Eels, Tobin. It's going to be a close one. Uh, hang on, Em. Oh, hang on. My umbrella's nearly <laughs> gone. It's time to find some uh, shelter. It's up to you, Salty. Thank you very much, Emma. Two last start winners about to do battle in the final game of uh, the triple header in week two of NRLW. It is the Eels against the Dragons. The Eels, the away side, making their way out onto Wynn Stadium, led by their inspirational skipper, Samima Taufa. And here come the Dragons. Keely Davis captaining the home side this afternoon in the absence of Kezi Apps. This will be a beauty. We had a good game in the middle game this afternoon with the Titans registering their first win of NRLW. Both of these teams successful last week, so a chance to join the Brisbane Broncos in going two from two after the opening two rounds of the competition. Alana Ferguson and Phil Gould joining me in commentary for this game. Intriguing matchups all over the place, as we just heard with Ruan Sims and Emma Lawrence. The battle of the number ones, Emma Tonegado and Bo Betty Welsh will be outstanding to watch this afternoon. There's plenty of great matchups right across the park. Belinda Sharp, close time on, and we are underway for our final game. And Oh boy, Novidi got to that one to save the day for the Eels. It could have gone anywhere. Good kick from Rachel Pearson to start the game. I reckon that's another pretty good matchup to keep your eyes on. The two number sevens, Maddie Studden and Rachel Pearson, both lining up in to contest for that New South Wales jersey. So it'll be interesting to see how they go up against one another. So first use of the football for Parramatta. This will be a good one, Gus. Welcome. Absolutely, yeah, both teams very impressive last week with their wins. And in fact, the football today has been really good. The two Queensland teams successful. Uh, Broncos and the Gold Coast Titans having their first ever victory in this competition. And they're, they're a formidable side, aren't they? Wonderful athletes in that side. Oh, very good in defeating the Roosters. Here's Nai Toka Toka. Sede Nai Toka Toka was very good last week. One there for Betty Wells. Yeah, the wind's very strong here behind the Dragons in this first half. It's really blown up from the south. And they're running into a, a very, very strong wind. Tegan Berry with the first touch. Quincy Dodd in jersey number 14, starting the game at dummy half. Is Elsie Elbert. Strong last week, particularly early in the win over the Gold Coast Titans. Here's a penalty. A perfect field position here for the Dragons and with all the changes they've had this week they'd love to get on the way to a good start. Well tap and go here. The Dragons. Aliti Namos. Now Albert straight and hard once again from Elsie Albert. Always fighting hard in the tackle. Dodd goes to dummy half. Davis, Pearson, Betty Wells, look out. She's going to be stopped 10 metres away from the line. Pearson, let that one go. Namos, is there a knock on there? No, there wasn't. Play on for Elsie Elbert. Poor communication there from the Dragons. Got a couple of tackles left in this set. Dodd, Davis, here's for Mayono. Plenty of room. And there's Brown, Keely Brown. In the side in the centres in place of Jamie Chapman. From Mayono goes on her own from dummy half. But the Eels defence is alert to it. It's going to be a changeover. Good pressure from the Eels defence. They kept the Dragons pretty well contained attacking that line. They looked a little bit unorganised, I thought. Heading in. Just some of those connections. They've got a few players that have changed in their starting lineup, so they need to figure that out pretty quick. And the Eels get a bit of a piggyback out of their own end. Aliti, Namos and Holly Wheeler. 
taking too long there. Matty Studden will find touch. The match-winning field goal last week in the dying stages against the Knights did the Eels number seven. Must be said, Sede Nay no, Toka Toka was outstanding throughout the game last week for the Eels. Always asking questions. And the Eels on their own 30. They let Samima Taufa go, and here's Kelly Signs. Now Studden, the first receiver. Five short of the halfway line here, Parramatta. Halfway through the set. There from Studden. We've got the Dragons fullback, Emma Tonegado, who we featured early on in the game, before the game. We spoke about Emma Tonegado last week to Alana at length, and, and she'll be much better for the run, even though she was very good in her return to rugby league last week. Yeah, absolutely. I think what we'll see build on Emma Tonegado's game as they get a penalty here, this will be handy for the Dragons. It's just some of those combinations, working with both halves. Her game awareness is brilliant and her work rate. She wants to get the football in her hands, so she's more than happy to take some of those carries out of their own end. But yeah, we'll see some of those combinations just build a little bit more, playing both sides of the rough. She's a, the two-time Olympian, right? The rugby girl. Yep. Yeah, she's got a gold medal, she Emma can Tano. Run. Yeah. She's a freak. She's, uh, She's been a standout in touch footy in rugby league. Then she went to sevens and she came back and has already made a statement after the first round. So Quincy Dodd oh, might not have been a penalty the, the Dragons wanted there because Dodd was taking off and they had the tapping. heels on the back foot. Well, tap and go. Here's Alidi Namos for... The Dragons, Dodd, Davis, Albert. Now Quincy Dodd, he's electric out of dummy half. Davis featuring a lot at first receiver. Now through my own, no. He's Tonegato for the line. They're going to stop her. And the Tonegato, five metres away from the line. Madison Bartlett, the dummy half, for Mayono, showing it, and eventually going to Davis. Towards that left corner they go, but the Eels defence still holding firm. Now here's Holly Wheeler on the charge, and is going to be stopped a couple of metres away from the line. Boy, they're asking some questions here, the Dragons. Dot on the last, goes on her own, and... It's over the line, but will be held up. It'll be a changeover. Well, this is relentless pressure for the Parramatta Eels to have to defend, and they've done a good job. No line breaks as yet. A lot of possession at their own end of the field, and the Dragons are using the ball nicely. I was noticing Alana, particularly in a lot of the younger girls that are now coming into the NRLW, they're, they're boasting about their background in touch football and tag football as well when they were younger. Yeah, I think it's a good way just even for their skill levels to build up. But as you know, NRLW has only just recently come on the TV screen. So a lot of their backgrounds are different codes of football. But we're seeing that transition change a little bit. I think, too, in terms of the kicking game, you can see that the tag background, there's a few more natural kickers with the grabber kicks and whatnot. But that's also developing as well. But it's a good way for young girls to get an introduction, isn't it? I mean, a oh, touch certainly. and tag is terrific. Yeah, absolutely it is. So many of the skills transfer over and a lot of the gameplay as well, particularly Oztag and Rugby League are very similar. Dragons through Pearson now. Here's another opportunity for them after that Eels error. Rachel Pearson, the best on the park in last week's win against the Titans. Dodd, uh, leading the Mossa straight onto it. Some stopping. Now Todd, through Mayono, Tonegato, and it's gone forward. A knock on from the Dragons, so the Eels survive again. Well, that's great defence, Alana. They've had them covered pretty much all across the park, haven't they? Yeah, they showed them the sideline, and just 
the time that they're taking away, if you have a look at the Dragons here, they're up in their faces. They don't have much space. The Dragons didn't set themselves deeper to create that little bit of extra room, but great defensive pressure to force that error. Now, yeah, lot. Not long now until 100% footy returns to Monday nights with Gus and Gell going head to head on biggest topics in rugby league. 100% footy returns on the first Monday night after round one here on your home of rugby league nine's wide world of sports. See yet another area. You ready for Monday nights to return, Gus? I am. I don't know why anyone watches. Listen to Paul Gallon, my God. <laughs> he comes up with some rubbish. <laughs> I was listening to commentate today. He got the obstruction rule, rule wrong again. <laughs> Just start off with that. <laughs> You're lucky, I think he's just walked out. <laughs> he wouldn't have said that if he was here. <laughs> There's another opportunity now for the Dragons. Knocking on the door again. Emma Tonegado lifting, and that is it. Over the top. Two sevens players coming head to head Penatani and Emma Tonegado, former teammates. Loves the contact, Penatani. Dog to dummy half. Big numbers out to the left. Davis, it went backwards. Here's Albert. And for the first time, the first pass has gone to ground. Dodd, Pearson. Went short that time. Tonegato was after it. Now Dodd, that's going to be knocked down. It could well be a try for the Dragons. It is. Pearson, Rachel Pearson. Right Spot, right time for the Dragons halfback. Well, you can just see in the lead up to this, the Dragons intentionally targeting that left edge defense of the Eels and going back that same way. There are a couple of service issues. We see here on the Harvey Norman replay, that again probably wasn't the best decision from the hooker to go there, given that Vete Welsh bumped up, but unfortunately spilt the ball. Pearson there to clean it up. Absolutely no surprise. The way that she reads the game and is all over that and smothered it and turned it into points, that's great. They were there to build a lot of pressure, Gus. But in terms of the basics, a couple of passes in the lead up, probably not perfect from, from the hooker. Yeah, they've had a lot of ball down this end. They've thrown a lot at them too. A lot of passes, a lot of structures, a lot of plays. In the end, it's come down to an opportunistic effort. But Betty Wells nearly got the intercept there, just fumbled it. They were able to pick it up and race over. Rachel Pearson looking to convert her own try. Lives in Wagga and travels the 700 Ks to training. Talk about commitment from the Dragons number seven and off the upright and through. She converts her own goal. Blood for the Dragons. Okay, stay on side. Similar start stay for them to the Knights earlier on today against the, the Broncos, but the Knights couldn't convert oh, early. The Dragons have been able to score first points. And that kickoff, well, it's a really good kickoff in these conditions, drilling it into touch. And Parramatta, the Eels, will get the ball back. Where, where would you like it, middle? I spoke to Maddie Studden pre-game about how important how important the kicking will be today not only in general play but but kickoffs as well so she's she's on the money just there well that was deliberate she knew exactly what she was doing okay. and got the ball back okay. for a team I think right across the board you know looking at the NRLW this year and in fact every year since it's begun the skills and the physicality is just getting better every year the shows that once they're subjected to the full-time and better coaching, and they're going to get better as time goes on. 
Well, Joey was raving about the time that he spent with the night team as well, because he spent about four or five training sessions with them, and just their eagerness to eagerness to learn. Anita Maynard goes short here to Charrington, who's going to be stopped just a couple of metres away from the line. Big chance here, Maynard, Studden, Daitoka Toka inside pass, Joseph A. Daniels for the line for the Eels. Driven back, solid defence there from the Dragons. Last play, Maynard goes on her own, can she burrow her way through? She can't, she'll be stopped. And it's going to be another changeover on the last. Good defence from the Dragons this time. A characteristic little run from Nita Maynard. Probably need to look for the repeat set in some of those circumstances, though. They, the defence was set ready to go for that one. They're just inside their own 30 here. The Dragons. Making some changes, some force through injury, and other some tactical changes. That's a good hit. So my Matafa. Yes. And Cody House, who made a, a good return to NRLW last week, coming off the, the bench. Has played for Queensland and the Gillaroos, but Alana's had a fair share of bad luck, hasn't she, throughout her career? A lot of injuries. That's going to be out. Oh, no, it, I was about to say out on the fall, okay. but it found touch. That's a great Keep kick in the end from Fuemi Ono. Well, it must have landed on its point because it was headed into the grandstand at one stage. Actually had a chance to run the ball here. Kicks it, wind takes it a little bit further. Well, I'm not sure that it bounced in. I've got old eyes, but she thought she kicked it out on the fall. Gave up. Yeah. Anyway, they also got the ball. They're giving away a little bit of size and strength for heels, aren't they? There's some big girls in this Dragons forward pack. One of them, the number eight, Elsie Albert, is picking up this week when she left off last week. But they're so athletic with it, that's the thing. Set here for the Eels coming out of their own ends. Two tackles left in it. Maynard going to dummy half is Studden electing to kick on the fourth tackle. Will be trapped there by Tonegado. Always looking, always scheming is Emma Tonegado. Samai Matau for there to make that first tackle. That's a that's a huge effort on a kick chase to start their defensive set. And that's just the mindset that she has, the work rate. She'll never stop. I've admired her from the first time I started watching the girls game. She's had, uh, I think, nine tests for Australia. Played in half a dozen of the state games. And always impresses. Great technique in defence. Really resilient. Good <laughs> with a solid run. And then passing just before the line. Energetic great. start for the Dragons 5-8. That was a great read in defence there. The young Eels girl. My Tucker Tucker really read that well and came up with a great tackle. Here's Navidi for the Eels. Oh, Vetti Welsh. Just outside of their own 20. There's a mix of familiar names in the women's game out here today, and you mentioned. Samaima Taufa and a number of those tests came in the 2017 World Cup where she was an integral part in the Tullaroo success there. The teammates just love playing with her because of the energy she brings. Maddie Studden cut her out then and that first knock on will be off the eels. That's a hard pass under the conditions. It's windy like this and a little bit wet. Putting play, putting your ball runners under pressure with such flat passes near the defence line will often end up in an error. That can be the frustration because they can't get up the other end of the field, just looking for something extra. 
tough one. So if you just come on the field, just like Philomena and EC had done, is Pearson. But with this strong breeze, Parramatta, 6 mil is not too bad. I mean, it's only another 12 minutes till half time. If they can just hold on and keep the score respectable going into the break. Tony Gardo. Playing the ball back to Dodd. Here's Fui Maono. He's been busy. Now Cody House steaming onto that one. Another good charge from Cody House. Bill from Gladstone playing it. Dodd. Davis now. Inside pass. And that is a really strong one from Janelle Williams. Just a couple of metres away from the line now, the Dragons. Can they score? Back to back tries. Fu Maono plays in motion. Wheeler for the line. Can she force her way over? Just short, made to play it. Last play here for the Dragons. Out they go, Bartlett. Now that's a knock on from the Dragons initially. Yes, it was. It'll be a turnover. That's that same defensive pressure from the Eels out there on that right-hand side. To be able to shut that down, they had no space left to do anything with the football. Brilliant defence from the Eels. Well, let's take your sideline, Emma Lawrence. Salty, the Eels are wearing black armbands today in honour of a number of family members. Kennedy Cherrington's great-grandmother, Maddie Studden's nan, Kane at Nibidi's cousin and Rakia Horn's stepdad. So our thoughts are with all of their families today. So the Eels players recognising a lot of these players' greatest supporters with the black armbands. So oh, that's a beautiful pass. And here goes Penitani up over the halfway line. Tonegato comes and makes the tackle. That's a great one-on-one -on -one tackle. Now Studden went backwards. Play on here for the Eels. Hanisi, strong run. They're on the front foot here, Parramatta. But it is the last tackle. Dragon scrambling well. Maynard, Nightoka Toka. Oh, she was smashed. Was that knocked down? It's play on. No. And come back. Bartlett's away, but Belinda Sharp is blowing the whistle. Penalty for a late tackle. And the run is all in vain. I think we've got yep. a penalty back here. Maybe for a late tackle. Come off. Yes. Oh. Cody has. Yep. The time they're coming back. It's gonna be a penalty. We're just waiting. I don't think it was late. It was probably bordering on the high side. That's all. Cody House. Keely! Keely, bring Cody out. I don't need this mama. The penalty for a late tackle, and Cody's on report. On report, Cody House. Penalty for the Eels. Well, here's a chance for Paramount. This is all set up by some beautiful ball playing down that left-hand touch line by Maddie Studd. Beautiful play down there. to put Penitani away, and it's, it's got them down. This is... A set of six starting only 25 metres out. Benisi, 15 away from the line. Maynard goes to Studden. She looks to accelerate. A little ball away, but well read by the Dragons defence. Shaley Bent. She'll dummy and go shortly. You can feel it. She's really setting them up for something. Tanisi again, heavily involved, this time driven back in the tackle. Some strong defence. Dodd was one of them, Davis the other. Nitoka Toka. Now Betsy Wells. They wrap her up a couple of metres away. Two tackles left in this set. Maynard. Now Samima Taufa. Scored a try last week. Stopped a few metres away now. Now Nitoka Toka had to reach for that one. It's still the last. Went backwards. Rubber kick off the chest and regathered. So the Dragons survive. Oh, 
What did you make of that attacking set, Gus? They haven't had too many opportunities down the centre of the field just yet. No, nah, look, I, I would say I'll put that down to fatigue it's with all the defence they've done at the other end of the field. They didn't look all that organised, and the passing, was, passing wasn't anywhere near as crisp. But they'll get another Good chance here. The Dragons have made an error coming out of trouble. If the Eels can just steady themselves a little bit. Matty Studden can, can get them organised around the middle part of the field. There's a real chance for them. So they're going to play a Parramatta knock-on here with the act of stripping the ball one-on-one -on -one, so the Dragons have it. Now just four sleeps to go until the NRL season returns. 2022 is shaping up to be the biggest year in rugby league yet with the biggest stars returning for their shot at glory. It all kicks off this coming Thursday night with Tommy Turbo Seagulls taking on last year's premiers, the Penrith Panthers, live on your home of rugby league, nine's wide world of sports. Is that all just four sleeps? What a game that is to <laughs> kick off the season too. That'll be a ripper. Some great clashes in round one of the NRL. So you can see two NRLW games next Sunday as well. And round three of the NRLW will continue. Heap of league coming up on nine. Oh, Fumayono puts it down. No toka toka for Parramatta. Here's Joseph A. Daniels. Big opportunity again here for the Eels. And they see. 25 metres away, just off centre. Dragons defence has answered all the questions so far. Betsy Wells, now Penetani looking to escape the clutches of Tegan Berry. Yeah, it's really good defence. Really good defence there by the Dragons. Got up and cut them off. And Cody House it was there. Gus is Betsy Wells. Now Rakaia Horn comes back towards, away from the sideline. He's going to be stopped a couple of metres away from the line. Now Studden puts in a kick. It's off the legs of the Dragons player. And was it deemed to be played at by Linda Sharp? It was played at, so it is a fresh set of six. Yeah, she definitely put her foot out there in the Tonegato. Another chance for the Eels heading towards the line. Ten minutes left in the first half. Tauffa put on her back. Good defence. Keely Davis. Anisi. Straight and hard from Philomena. Anisi. She's been good off the bench. Here's Sede Naitaka Toka. Joseph A. Daniels. Bang! Great tackle. The defence is terrific. Keely Brown. Hey, Toka Toka puts in a kick. And it's going to be taken in goal. Seven tackle set here for the Dragons. And the Eels defence better look out here. So if there's one person in the women's game you don't want to give any space to, it's Tegan Berry. Next choice. <laughs> <laughs> Gatto. Say, well. yeah, they've got to be careful here, the Eels. They've been disappointed at the other end of the field, and sometimes you can be ruining that fact and not concentrate. The Dragons look like they're going to come back hard here. Quincy Dodd had to reach for that one. Now Pearson. Driven back in some solid defence. From the Eels. That's brilliant stuff. Jade Etherden rod in underneath there. Elbert with an offload back off the bench. Now Keely Davis. Here's Janelle Williams. She throws it out the back. Davis has got it. Now Saley Ben, 12 metres away from the line. 
the Dragons. Wouldn't this be something if they were able to go back to back? Good kick in the goal area, but equally a great pick up there from Navidi for the Eels. Came across, covered beautifully with the winger. She swooped on that like a seagull on a chip. That's what I looked like with my hot chips about half an hour ago. <laughs> That's great from Parramatta. They recovered well. Yeah, Maddie. Defensive efforts from both teams. When it's a little damp like this, ball movement is hard, but they've still been moving the ball around both sides, and the defence has been asked plenty of questions. Their structure looks so much better. Their physicality is so much better. Their spacings in defence. They're really organised. There's, a, there's a, obviously a great improvement in knowledge of the game as well. There's Mao Lung here, dummy half. You won't miss her in the headgear. Tackle there by Holly Wheeler. And the ball's come out. Good shot there by the Dragons number 13 in Holly Wheeler. One of those players that Jamie Soud would have been expecting a lot from. Missing a few experienced forwards today, Holly Wheeler. She's got up and put pressure on and forced an error prior to this as well. So that defensive pressure is really important. Lots of energy in the line speed. Particularly without Kezi Apps as well. She was so dominant in the middle of the field last week. So Holly Wheeler just stepping up to apply some of that pressure. Emma Tonegato kicking early. Tegan Berry coming out after it. <laughs> Who's going to get the bounce? It goes in a touch. Out off Dragon. Oh, you love to see that. Yep. Risk reward, and it nearly came off. Yeah, and I think the Dragons, too, are looking at the scoreboard and thinking, gee whiz, we've got this breeze at our backs. We've had a lot of opportunity. We should be a little further in front on the scoreboard, so maybe that. That prompts that sort of play on tackle zero off the scrum. We'll have a kick and chase and see if we can't get one. Yields, and just got to keep shouldering up. More solid contact. That time it was LCL, but dishing it up. Yeah, the hitting technique's been terrific. Philomena Hanisi for the Eels. Oh. <laughs> a little bit of a head clash. Elsie got up as if nothing had happened. And Philomena Hanisi receiving attention on the ground for the Eels. Just over five minutes left in the first half. We're on our third and final game of our triple header. The standouts today has been the, the physicality. Every game has been extremely physical. Coming from the field is Anisi. Kelly Signs coming back on. She's off for an HIA. Okay. Let's play on here for the Eels. There's our ladder, our live ladder so far. That's where the Dragons will be if they're able to go on to win it this afternoon. They've been good, the Broncos, haven't they? They lost a few players, but plenty of depth there, obviously. Stutton. That one bounces and goes out. A little two from two, the Broncos, and the winner of today's game will be two from two as well. Dragons with the play the ball. Elsie Elbert has ball in hands. Oh, 
Rama. Dragons middle forwards have really aimed up in the absence of Kezi Apps in this one today so far. Yeah, they have, in, in particular in defence as well. We know that Kezi's famous for her repeat efforts and just her energy. We've seen Elsie Al Albert bring that energy, but there's a few of them that have put their hand up to really fill that void, and they've done very well. It's a matter or not of if they can sustain it for the 70 minutes. Here's Albert on the charge. Elsie Albert, good tackle. Solid defence. I've liked what I've seen from Keely Davis today, playing that lock role. She's been a great coming into first receiver, being a good link player, but then also taking some of those hard hits as the footy goes out over the sideline. Well, we're used to saying for a long time that kick goes out gives the players a rest, but you don't get much of a rest anymore because it's just to play the ball. Now for the Eels. Penatani for Parramatta. And here's Vaughan. And next Sunday, the Parramatta Eels season opener kicks off next Sunday afternoon, March 13, at Combank Stadium with a triple header of NRL and NRLW. Enjoy a feel-good Sunday in paradise, which is going to be stacked with action and entertainment for the whole family. Get your triple header tickets for just $25 from Ticketek today. Starting. Night Tonga Tonga with fat footed there. Got a kick away. What's the bounce going to do? Oh, it bounces backwards. Night Tonga Tonga's got it. Does well to stay in the field of play. Nivedi should be bundled in the touch. Well, they did so well there, the Dragons. Again, that was Holly Wheeler that rushed up on Maddie Studden, who was in the position to take the kick. She had all the time taken away from her, so had to deliver it to Naitoka Toka under a lot of pressure. And then they just kept turning up in numbers, the Dragons. The feature of both teams throughout the afternoon. Just turning up for each other. LC Albert inside the final two minutes of the half. Ellie Johnson, one of the defenders. Sloppy play the ball, but it's all okay. Here's Holly Wheeler for the Dragons. Now, Keely Davis, that'll be a knock on. The Eels will be able to get onto that one, will they? No. We'll have a scrum. Needed soft hands there. I think we've seen a few errors similar to that, some from dummy half, some tip-ons from the Dragons that have just let them down, just little execution errors. Let's go, that have put them on the back running. foot and given the Eels a little bit of momentum. Here we go, heads in, heads in Parramatta, lock right in, right in. So Maddie starting to feed the scrum. Here's Bo Betty Wells. I won't want to switch off here, the Dragons, because the Eels can pounce from anywhere. Taufa, that one went high. Now take a quick tap, but not allowed. Inside the final minute of the half. Samima Taufa. Straight up the middle from her. Now Lungi. Here's Charrington. Kennedy Charrington. 15 away from the line. Now Lungi. Now here's Studden putting on a step, going on her own. Good tackle. Elsie Elbert finishing off. Maddie Studden. Here's Bovetti Wells putting in a kick. It's ricocheting everywhere. Still tackle four. 20 seconds left in the half, and they put it down here, the Eels. Bit of disorganisation when Maddie Studden Gilly. did the show and go and got in and got tackled. They they weren't organised. Bovede Welsh got it on the left-hand side. The kick option on the third was the wrong one to take. 
Would have liked to have seen a little bit more dominance from Naitoka Toka out on the right edge to just overcall that. Reset her side. Half time. It is half time. It's been a willing contest. High quality, some good attacks, some good defence. Only one try to speak of, and it's the Dragons, though, leading the Eels. Six points to nil. Thank you. I've got Eels coach Dean Witters down here with me. Dean, it was a pretty physical first half and a bit of fatigue set in towards the end. What do you want to see out of your charges? Well, we've just got to keep the possession 50-50, and I think we dropped too much ball there early in that first half, and we were taxed for the rest Outside. of the game. And we just couldn't recover. We've got to play smarter than that and find a way out of trouble. How do you change that energy? Uh, I think, you know, we've got to hold on to the ball, obviously, and then also look at getting at a few of their targets in their defensive line so we get out of trouble better, and our kicking game's got to improve in the second half. Well, good luck. Enjoy. Thanks, Rue. Thanks, Dean. Up to you, Salty. Thank you, Ruan, and thanks to Dean Witters, the coach of the Eels, for joining us. It's only one converted try for the Eels. One try in the opening 35 minutes is Elsie Elbert. She's been strong at a rest midway through the first half. Davis to Williams. Strong hit. Good offload. Back to Davis. And the Dragons. Refuel Mayono. 10 metres into Eels territory. Two tackles left here. Why are we going to make Davis? Pearson. Now Ben. It's a pass away. It'll be a changeover. It was the last. Not a bad set of six, but couldn't get to a kick. Oh, well, they're going to get the ball back here anyway. The Dragons. Pearson. Thought about a pass. Went on her own. She's definitely limping, Pearson. Gus, you were down there at half time. The rain's sunk back in, but what's what was the wind like? Yeah, the wind died a little bit as the water came down, so with the rain, the wind dropped. Not as bad as it was in the first half, which is an advantage for the Dragons, I guess. Here goes Paige McGregor. And they've got, they've got the lead. A couple of metres away from the line. Renee Target goes to dummy half. Davis. Dummy then tried to burrow her way through the Eels defence. Thought she was able to continue, but the ball of health came. Target goes to Fuamayono. They've got numbers here. Wheeler out the back. Tonegata will be wrapped up. Tana Navidi did very well. As did Joseph A. Daniels. Now Wheeler turning, passing. Davis, good hands. Puts a kick in the end goal area. Oh, nearly got there. Samima Taufa. Batted it dead. Great work from the Eels, number 13, their captain. Yeah, brilliant stuff. Desperation here from the Eels. Down 6-0, they know one more try. Might be a bridge too far in this type of weather. But again, Samima Taufa showing the way with just effort and determination, as she always does. Do you have a favourite women's player, Gus? Is it, is it mine? I've always liked it, Samima. Right from the first time I saw her. Plus, she was wearing a blue jersey. <laughs> Not too big on them Queenslanders. With you. <laughs> Not too big on them Queenslanders, you know. Even though they keep winning. Yeah, Holly Wheeler throws it out the back. Play on here for the Dragons. Janelle Williams. Half thought about an offload, but did well to maintain possession. Not that time. Not that time, okay, no. Kennedy, Kennedy, easy. I will say that the Broncos Middle, have got a couple of very side. extraordinary footballers. I mean, um, we've all known Arlie Brigginshaw for some time, but the, the young fullback's just getting better and better. Tamika Upton, Tameka is it? Tamika Upton, yeah. yeah. She's just getting better and better. Her game awareness, I think, too, just being back there and having that, those coaching staff in there working with her so much. But actually, I was just talking to Salty before. I saw her at halftime of the previous game in a, in a moon boot. Mm. So hopefully that's precautionary or nothing too serious. Okay, 
can't save a place. So now Tonga Tonga just had a, a word to the Shirley, Shirley. referee there. Have it. Rain's really coming down now. Joseph A. Daniels. Strong for the Eels is Joseph A. Daniels. Front of the football. Could have been a very dangerous run from Tana Navidi. I think the Eels are just going to have to come up with not so much the courage but the smarts to kick early in the tackle count with this bit of breeze behind them and in these conditions. It's going to be hard to get out of your own end of the field the way the Dragons are defending. Look at this, seat. Elsie Elbert. I think the best way is to kick it and chase it if they can. That's great back-to-back -back efforts there from Elsie Elbert. Made the first tackle one-on-one, -on -one, then came back and made the second one-on-one -on -one as well. And there was a knock-on there in the play the ball. Before and that's what happens. If you, if, the more tackles you have coming out of trouble in conditions like this, the closer you are to an error, the closer you are to turning the ball over. So you're better off saying, well, instead of waiting till tackle four or tackle five, let's kick it on tackle two and get ourselves down 30 metres downfield and see if we can't tackle an error into them. But it, it takes a lot of courage and it takes a lot of smarts to think that way. All you're doing is waiting for an error at your own end. Big chance here for the Dragons. We're waiting on a football. Old mates had to run the length of the field to get it. Against the wind. Them. Now he won't give it to them. It's my ball. Where's our okay. ball, girls? If I was there, we'll be ducking for cover because the rain is absolutely hammering down. Here's Emma Tonegato. Now Pearson. Paige McGregor. Straightened up the attack 12 metres away from the line. Points at a premium in these conditions. Target, the Fuimaono. Now Holly Wheeler. Drifting. Thought about the pass there to Janelle Williams, but hung on to it. Target. They stacked the right and went to the left. It might still pay off if they can stay in the field of play. They did just ground. Did well to go to the ground. Now target. Wheeler. Good defence. Christine Pauley. Now Tonegato. Quick hands. Well, this will be all. Oh, I was about to say it'll be play on as it got to Tegan Berry, but it won't be because she couldn't handle these wet conditions. That Parramatta right side defence. I mean, they've done a brilliant job today. They're jamming up very tight and they're sliding out towards the sideline and using the conditions. And the Dragons keep seeing space out there and running towards it. But by the time they get there, it's all closed down and there's blue and yellow jerseys all over them. So we've got to look, probably change the angle a little bit, turn the ball back inside. The space they see out there is just a mirage at the moment. It's a bar in the desert. There we go. <laughs> it's a mirage. So the Eels have got the aid of this wind, but this rain is unbelievable now. Kick it now. Kick it now. Hold here. The fullback Emma Tonegato is, is up. Fullback Shallow, kick it now, kick it now. Just a reminder too in the women's game, it is a 40 30. Toka Toka though, looking to run it. Be driven back. Look at it now, it's, it's wind and rain now. It's genuinely sideways, isn't it? It's Joseph A. Daniels off the field for the Eels. Got to be a clearing kick from Matty Studden. Goes to Studden. Charge down. I don't think it was played at because it was a Falcon. Well, that was played at. This will be play on now for the Eels. That's what happens if you wait to tackle five. Everyone can see the kick coming. 
Even though you've got it now, I'd be tempted to kick on tackle too. I'd kick now. You watch. Dragons fullback comes up. Wings are up. It's now, not in the mindset. Now kick down into a corner. Oh, Johnson, what a run. Strong charge again. The Eels starting to get a little momentum here. Now, well, do we play, play on? Because they got a penalty. Malungi now takes the tap. 22 metres away, full set of six here for Parramatta. What can they do with it? Anisi. Smashed in the tackle. Naitoka Toka goes to Ellie Johnson. Okay, let her up. Couple of metres away from the line, halfway through the set. Now Lungi, here's Samima Taufa. Good tackle. Down low on Taufa. It was Janelle Williams. Yeah, oh, Anisi. She's going to be Wait. smashed. Oh. No, now Maddie Studden. Oh. Betsy Welsh had to reach oh. for that one. The pass was too low. Penetani has it. It's still the last. And the Dragons defense holds firm. It'll be a turnover. Well, they did well, the Dragons' defence, but the Eels, in terms of their attack, didn't see the halves combine once in that attacking set. So really easy to pinpoint where their attack's actually going, and and the Dragons were able to just pluck them off and move up and put that pressure on. But we'd love to see Naitoka Toka and Maddie Studden combine, play that direct brand of football. Come on, Manil! Mark your square! All right, hold, hold. Madison Bartlett for the Dragons. Oh, this is a good contest. In the wet. Both teams still looking to ask plenty of questions with the ball. 20, stand now, Ellie. Oh, Ellie, Shirley, It Shirley. is teeming down rain, and it's into the faces of the Dragons players. Oh, great hit. Elsie Albert drops it, but that was fantastic defence again by the Eels. Okay, everyone up. Well, they can sense it, the Eels. Put up a really tough first half into a strong breeze and defended stoutly to keep themselves in the contest. And now you can see where they can tackle some errors into these, these Dragons girls in these conditions. I still think Alana... A likely try is going to come from a grubber kick or something like that in early in the tackle, it's counting behind off. the line. Would love to see it. Some of these forward right. runs too, if they can get close to the line. We saw a great kick in the game before where it, wa it wasn't your conventional grubber end over end. If the ball was flattened and just kicked on the belly, just so it slides in over the line. Very easy for the attacker to dive onto. Yeah, just a bit of creativity here from the Eels. Shirley Malungi to dummy half. Samaya Taufa goes to Naitoka Toka. Sede Naitoka Toka, the ball comes free. Another error from Parramatta, just when it looked like they were starting to build some pressure. Hope you're enjoying this as much as we are. This is an enthralling contest. And credit to both teams because the conditions are absolutely horrible. Elsie Elbert, little juggle. Breaks 11, 12 metres. And a target. Back in the old days, this showground, this, this was the Wollongong showground. It would have been underwater by now. The field's terrific. The field used to be in the middle of a greyhound track and it would fill up with water. I'm serious, like yep, 12 inches deep. When, when the leather balls were in bulk, Gus? Yeah. There's a test up. The ball bounces. The Dragons have got it. And no harm done no as far as the Eels are concerned. Now, I guess I know you love saying it, and I've stolen it as well, that if you let the ball bounce, you're inviting disappointment into your life. Every time. You don't want to be. Is that will still apply in this? Every time. Okay. Every time. So let's check. Now... 
We're okay up in the commentary box. It's very comfortable up here. Unfortunately, the house full sign is up in the commentary box. So it's down here on the sideline, Ruan. If she can hear us. Yeah, as you can see, Saltsy, the rain is incredibly heavy and the wind has died off a little bit, but previously it was coming in sideways. And you know what, I agree with Gus. I think if you can put that ball on the deck and create a little bit of uncertainty for the defensive line, it could create a lot of opportunities early in the tackle count. And he started standing flat-footed. That first receiver there. He's well, to still hang on to the football. See, so when you leave the tackle five, now all three of them are back there, ready to run the ball with support. It's hard to find the ground and get most out of your kick. Okay, stand up now. Anyway, hold, hold, hold. Madison Bartlett for the Dragons. Kennedy, up. They play need off. Hold. Looking towards the 50th minute mark, 20 minutes remaining. And it's going to be a very long 20 minutes for both sets of players. Eliti Namos, good strong charge. Back from a stint on the bench. And gets a penalty as well. Yeah, she put pressure on the defensive side. They wanted to slow the play of the ball. Come up with a penalty for a team. What are we doing? Okay, you're on the mark there. They will kick for touch. You can't see the Wollongong Ocean out there. Look at the, the range is pouring. He's watching this afternoon, Paul Horton, been naming it the, the Wollongong Ocean. Come on, mate, get up! We did see a yacht go out there earlier today, Gus. No, no, Nita, Nita. A yacht? <laughs> yes. A little sailing boat. Not in New Zealand by now. Stand up now! Oh, look at that. Ooh, you can see it there on your screen. The Dragons, though. They're just concentrating on trying to add another try here. Here's Shaley Bent getting a lovely ball from her halfback, okay, yeah, Rachel Pearson. Right. Now Quincy Dodd, a few metres away from the line. Healy Davis, Fumayono drifting, throwing a pass out wide that can't be handled. The Mirage got him again. <laughs> Where do you want it? I said, look at all that space out there. Let's get it out there as quick as we can. And when they get there, there's plenty of Eels defenders. This may be a little bit of a change of angle, might put them in two minds. All right, let's go sideline. Emma Lawrence has Sean Timmons with her. Take it away, Emma. Thank you, Salty. Well, Timo, are you impressed by what you've seen by these Dragons women out there? It's been a good start. Both sides defensively have been pretty good. It's only 6 0. Uh, they started to come up with a few errors in this second half, but the conditions that we've got at the moment, it's horrendous out there. So I'm happy to be sitting in the sideline, but the girls are going well, defending well. But as I said, if whoever can hold the ball, I think we'll go on and win it. NRL begins this week. The Dragons have recruited well. Impressive in the charity shield. Excited to see them? Yeah, real keen. Obviously, round one's coming, but we recruited well. We've got some uh, experience and some real uh, good youth coming through. Uh, we've seen last year in Amone and Sloan and Sullivan, so it's a good mix. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to round one, and we've had a good pre good preseason, so hopefully we can take that uh, into round one and get a win. Can't wait. Well, I'll let you go and stay dry, and I'll hand it back to you, Salty. Thanks, Emma. One of the greats, Shawnee Timmins. He won us an origin with a golden point field goal. Day in Zed Stadium there one night. Good player. Really good player. From about 60 metres out. Okay, 70 now, I think he's selling it. Yeah. Hey, I'm now, Maddie. Yeah, look he still me. plays okay. a touch footy on a on a Sunday morning here on the beach. Uh, Does he? The Wollongong with a group of guys. He had yeah. bad knees. I remember he, he was a Lead very courageous player because oh, he couldn't get through a lot of training if he wanted to play on the weekends. He had a chronic knee issue. But Kennedy soldiered now. on. Saley Bent playing it for the Dragons. Here's Gilly Davis. Saliti Namos. Strong off the bench in this her second stint. Quincy Dodd out of dummy half. There's half an opening there, but this who closed it. Samima Taufa. Tackle from the eel skipper. Fumayono drifting again and can't find a winger again. What did she see there, Gus? Mirage. It's all a mirage. 
It's a water cooler in the desert. It's not there. Well, th there is space out there, but they're running the wrong lines. You can see the centre both times has come far too towards the post. She's just got to hold that that outside line, and then it's just simply Holly. through the hands, just to straighten up and draw those Liddy, defenders Liddy. one on one. Solid hit, but offside inside the ten. Take your time here, Manny. Make sure you kick it out. A little bit of breeze at your back. Good kick. Now the Eels have got a set up camp down this end of the field. They shouldn't let the Dragons out until they come away with points. The lowest yeah. scoring NRLW game was the first ever game. When there were 14 points scored when the Warriors Whippy, beat the Roosters now. by 10 points to four. Started getting a pass away poorly, and it's been put down. Kennedy, get up now! Just can't build pressure. Wait. Wait. The Eels. Cody House on the halfway line. Wait. You can see on that shot there just how heavy that rain has become now. You can believe getting even heavier. Davis playing it. Quincy Dodd, the dummy half. Bua Mayono showing it, going on her own this time. There's a good tackle there from Philomena Hanisi. Initially to make the tackle, Abby Church was there as well. 20 metres away. Goodness me. I used to love playing in weather like this. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. I hope you're comfortable at home, folks, watching this in your lounge room Take or it back. Well, sitting in the family room. Oh, so, oh, look at that rain. Spare a thought for the players. Here's Cody House. Cody House for the line, reaches out and scores. Have you got grounding? Cody House steaming onto that one. Can I go on the grounding? Yes, OK. I might have to have a look at this. Yeah. Well, that's the way to go in the conditions. Coming up to tackle six. We've got no try. Oh, well, the bunker won't be able to see. It's raining too hard. <laughs> Look at all this. Look at the conditions. It's a miracle if she's been able to reach out and hold on to the ball. No. Good tackle. Yeah, the Dragons well, play a loose possession well. short of the goal line. We have a decision. Okay. So Vetty Welsh did really yep. well there. Okay, thank you. To cause some interference. Look at this. Yep. No try. Knock on. Knock on. Short of the line. Look at that hand rain. Yep, thank you. I know we keep Better harping on it, but we want you to realise at home, folks, just how heavy it is. Hand over. Yep. Yep. Well, at least we're at the footy. Yeah. Unlike those people up north who are doing it tough at the moment. Let's hope the weather improves up there. But this is, it's from a footy sense, this is really difficult conditions. It certainly is. But Gus, that's the way you've got to do it, isn't it? A, a hard, direct run towards the line. Keep it nice and tight. Don't test yourselves on the edges. Yeah, I think I think Jamie Soward might have sent out a message there because that set of six was a little different. And I think Parramatta need a message that they need to kick the ball earlier. And back their kick chase to get some field position. Good girl. A great run. Samaima Taufa. Oh, and gets an offload. Need a Maynard. That's really good stuff from the Eels, and it's all started from their skipper, Samima Taufa. And Night Tonga Tonga gets a pass away, and they're going to be stopped here 20 metres away from the line, the Eels. It is the last tackle. What sort of kick will we see? Matty Studden puts it along the ground. Tonegato was there for the Dragons and was just dragged down. Flop. And a flop, a penalty. He's piled around the leg. That was a great run from Smyva Taufa. There's been a, a rock in defence, but she just showed a determination there and got the offload. And probably a poor fifth tackle option at the end of it has handed the ball back. What's this? Just charges in, bang, bang, bang. Wet conditions, charges out the other side. And gets an offload. There's nothing of her. There's nothing of her. You know how much she squats, guys? One... 
does. No. <laughs> she does. <laughs> she does, it does. She's a machine. But wet weather footy, that offload, we haven't seen too many of them in this game. That's another great way to open up. Just a little bit of space in and around the ruck. It's not a dangerous option to take because they are quite shorter passes. Shiley bent here for the Dragons. Quincy Dodd, Keely Davis. And he's Tegan Dimmick. Her dad, Jim, would be a great asset in these sort of conditions. He's enjoying watching this one this afternoon. Now Brown gets a pass away and the Dragons have still got it. 12 minutes remaining. Don't forget, it's all locked up after the 70 minutes. We do go to Golden Point. Here's a kick. Now this could go anywhere. Tegan Berry was coming out after it. The Eels are... Oh, no, they put it down. I was about to say, here goes Tiana Penatani. She was off and gone. She was gone. That could have been a 110-metre try. I reckon she might have had them. What's this? She's out. Get past this one. And... Uh, Just lost a handle on the ball. Let's go, let's go. Yeah, look at the water now. Just clock. building up 15, in puddles on Wind Stadium. Ten seconds. Head in. Low, low. Hold off. Stay there, Maddie. Well, the Dragons. Another big opportunity. Here goes Tonegado now. She won't pass. She'll go on her own. Look at that water. Quincy Dodd. Keely Davis gives a pass away. It's Tegan Dimmick. Penalty. Inside the 10. No, 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 no. It's not quick. Well, you'd nearly have to kick the goal. Eight points will be a monstrous lead in these conditions. Two points. No, no. And they will take a shot here, the Dragons. So yeah. uh, six points to nil, about to come eight nil, but take yeah. you won't take it for granted that even though it's from right in front in these conditions. So it's Rachel Pearson lining this one up to yeah. make it an eight point lead. Into the win right in front. Your biggest concern here is slipping over. you just got to take dainty little steps and get in. And... There it goes. There we go. It's over. It's an eight-point lead now for the Dragons. The time running out, nine minutes left. Seriano, get off! Albert with a strong charge. Play the ball as well. Nita, where Got to are? say, we're congratulating the players and the officials in these conditions, but... I want to give a little shout out to our crew as well because visibility is getting pretty ordinary and they're not missing a beat. Well, our great cameraman, the best in the business at Nine's Wide World of Sports, Gus. Yeah, well, we've got to watch the TV screen to see it because we can't Elsie see them on the field. Elsie. Another good run by, is it Elsie? Elsie Elbert, yeah. And another penalty. I think this time they'll just continue to apply the pressure. Yeah, keep tapping the ball. Just keep turning it inside to the big people. Got a goal. Oh, okay. Well, they are going to take the two. Lucky I'm not catch. <laughs> so they'll take the two here, the Dragons.
So Rachel Pearson in the driving rain, into the wind, moves in, and she's kicked it. 10 nil Dragons. Dragons taking the ball from the kickoff. Ten point lead they have. Six and a half minutes remaining. The Eels in this weather. Well, they're not out of it, but in this weather, it's going to be very difficult. Alana, the Dragons have done a really good job. I reckon they've improved immensely on the last couple of years. They just look a lot more organised and a lot more confident in what they do. Yeah, certainly I think direction... Rachel Pearson for me in terms of halves and having a little bit of communication out there this season in particular has been a big difference. They've got that genuine kicking option as well, which goes a long way. But you're right, just in terms of being direct and they've got a couple of combinations that have worked through now. But they're definitely one of the danger sides. There's a kick. Just sat there waiting to be picked up. Okay, stand up. Horn for the Eels, driven back. Good tackle, Paige McGregor. Yeah, their defence has been outstanding. Really has been. Physical and really effective. Over five minutes left. Pools of water all over Wynn Stadium. Novidi playing it. Here's Betsy Welsh. Don't tell me that doesn't look like fun. Seriously. Paddy Stutton. Oh, he wants that kick back again. Taken there by Tegan Berry. I think all of us love playing around in the left. I'm going to echo what you said earlier, though, Gus, thinking of everyone who's in flood recovery mode in southeast Queensland. And all the parts of New South Wales through to the western areas of Sydney as well. We're all thinking of you on this Sunday afternoon. Hope you're just enjoying the footy if you're able to have a little bit of a, a break. The Eels have it. I spent a lot of the off-season driving up that way. I drove to and from Brisbane a few times, across the harbour in different areas up there. And it's hard to imagine looking at the scenes on the TV. Just what it looks like up there. There's a pass out the back, but it came as the, the call of Helds was made by referee Belinda Sharp. They need something here. He's poorly in the Dragons' territory. Now Lungy. A short ball there from Maynard. 11 metres into Dragons territory. Maynard. Two mines there. And it was easy pickings for the Dragons defence. And they've got the ball here. St George Illawarra. Through Renee Target. Well, you could just see that they didn't have a plan then. The Eels. They knew that it wasn't going too well for them. They didn't have much momentum. And no attacking genuine options pushing through. Bete Welsh has seen the most likely threat, particularly since this rain started pouring down. In finding a little bit of space, she needs to pop up in and around the ball a little bit more. Ten down with not long to go. Just under three minutes, in fact, Milana. The Dragons' job's pretty simple, though. They just need to work for this territory field position. Hold the ball, kick to the corner rely on that defence to keep them down this end of the field. Last play here for the Dragons. Pearson puts in a kick. Tegan Berry coming out after it. The Eels have got it. 
And now they're going to have to go 99 metres. Well, much better end to the set. You can see Pearson, she's just such a natural kicker of the football. They kept it nice and simple, the Dragons. She, she was able to find that grass, particularly in these conditions, against the wind. With the rain coming out her face, did really well to control that set. I don't think the Eels have lost any admirers either. They've been really Good tough. Only one thing. try in the whole game. Hang on, hang on, hang on. A couple of penalty goals out of frustration in the second half, but okay. they too have defended really well. <laughs> the Eels 10 short of halfway, a minute and a half remaining. Next week, Gus. Absolutely. You know what? Absolutely. Look at this run. Your your favourite player, Samaima Taufa, again on the charge. She's a machine. And play. Good run. Need a Maynard. Now Lungy. Here's Maddie Studden going on her own. Easy pickings there for Keely Davis. Making the tackle. She's been terrific defensively this afternoon, Keely Davis. Here's Nitoka Toko getting a short pass away, but again the Dragons defenders are there. They made the play it on the last. Today, Nitoka Toko, a little grabber kick, and Emma Tonegato just takes no chances and boots it into dead in goal, so it'll be a dropout coming. No, Toka Toka. She's a very skillful player. I don't think she's seen enough ball today. Go on, drop out. I think she, could, she could use a lot more possession. I'm told she wears that headgear because she loves Jamie Sauer. Rachel. And he coaches the other team. Coaches the other team. Okay. There you go. Yeah. She's a 5'8", and she loves Jamie Sauer. And she wears a headgear to honour him. But he's coaching the Dragons. So we'll only have time for the dropout, if that. It's an on-field HIA assessment happening at the moment. In the goal area. So Dragons remain undefeated. Okay. Two undefeated teams, the Dragons and the Broncos now after two weeks. The dropout in the conditions. Last play of the game, the siren will sound, the home fans will celebrate. The Dragons have defeated the Eels in unbelievable conditions, 10 points to nil.